In the world of Team Walleye Fishing, there is no greater event. 49 of the best teams in the country competing on the big waters of Lake Erie. And their biggest challenge will be against Mother Nature at the 2015 Cabela's MWC Championship. This week on Federation Angler TV. We're here at Huron, Ohio on Lake Erie for the Cabela's World Walleye Championship. Uh, this is the 2015 championship from the Cabela's Masters Walleye Circuit 2014 season. We've got our team of the year here. We've got our past World Walleye Champions here. Uh, we've also got the Cabela's National Team Champions here. This will be a shootout of the best of the best from the Cabela's Masters Walleye Circuit 2014 season. Teams will launch from Huron Boat Basin, make a short run downriver and on to Lake Erie. There, there's no other place in the country where you can catch as many big fish as you can on, as you can on Lake Erie. When we come here, it's, it's just amazing what you catch. This is probably the first that we've ever seen weather like what we've had, so it's been tough, but normally it's, it's fantastic. Nothing's like Lake Erie walleyes. They're usually big, meaty fish. They're fat. Um, the October, November bite out here is phenomenal. Um, but like I said, right now the water's just been really dirty and a lot of guys are having a hard time getting on the fish. It's been rough. You know, the weather's been up and down rough, windy the last 10, 12 days. You know, today was probably our nicest day that we had and could really get around and do a few things, let the water settle down a little bit. But the fishing has been tough and it, and it should improve as this tournament goes on, but right now it's tough. This is a three-day tournament, two-person teams. They're allowed to bring in their five biggest walleyes each day. We do not have a blow day set, so if Mother Nature churns up too much, we'll uh, err on the side of safety and keep the guys on land, but we're hoping to get three days in a row out on the big waters of Lake Erie. Well, day one here, weren't too sure this morning going out if we were starting with cranks or crawlers, but the weather's nice, and uh, we're gonna start with crawlers. It's kind of been one of those things where the water temperature is still hovering around that 60 degree mark. It just doesn't want to leave summer. And uh, even though it's the end of October, you should, be, should have crankbaits on. That water's just, just too warm and the crawlers are definitely still working yet. We'll check in with the defending champions later, but for now, we'll make a short move. Do what you want, what you want with my body. What you want with my body. Corey Heiser and Troy Morris started the day in good spirits, but their enthusiasm didn't last. An hour into day one, and they're already struggling. It could be a long three days. We figured today was gonna to be a grind. These are those tough mental days where you just gotta keep yourself grinding and grinding and grinding for the bites. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's I don't been know. an hour already, right? Yeah, an hour and 20, 10 minutes. <clears throat> I mean, that's the, that's the deal. Do you keep grinding thinking this is the deal? And, with Heiser and Morris on the move, we'll continue coverage with Carl Holton and Marty Stufen. If they get this one in the boat, they'll have a limit. Go get her. There you go. Got him. That's good, good deal. That's a nice one. That's a good one. He's fat. Yeah, that was probably a four pounder, you suppose? That one yeah. we just caught? He's, she's close to 23, 24, uh, almost 24 inches. So. All right, the camera guys, good luck. We like that. Well, as expected, fishing is tough. Despite it being October, Erie has yet to cycle out of its summer conditions, and the warm, dirty water is proving to be a challenge for many of the teams. Heading to the stage for weigh-in, Holton and Stufen put their five on the scales for 17 pounds, eight ounces, and a 14th place finish on day one. How are we feeling? Feeling good. The defending champion, Corey Springle and Derek Novice, had a rough day, catching just one keeper for one pound, nine ounces. 
Looking at the top of the leaderboard, Mark Campo and Greg Whitson weighed 24 pounds even, locking up the third spot. Jamie Taranju and Ross Neubauer's five fish weighed in at 2403. The top spot was claimed by the local team of Dan Geese and Matt Davis, with their five pushing the scales past the 30 pound mark, putting them into the driver's seat going into day two. It was by far uh, better than anything we did pre-fishing. It was, uh, pre-fishing was really tough. And today, bites just came, they came in flurries. We, uh, we had three in about 35, 40 minutes, and then we sat for four hours and never moved the board. Davis and Geese won this event back in 2009, and now the former champs are more than six pounds ahead of the rest of the field. Coming up, we'll continue tournament coverage of the 2015 Cabela's MWC Championship for Huron, Ohio, right here on Federation Angler TV. Welcome back to Federation Angler TV. Tournament coverage is brought to you in part by Cabela's, it's in your nature. By Low Rants, the world leader in fishing electronics. And by Yellowbird. Welcome back to Lake Erie, the site of the 2015 Cabela's MWC Championship. Our host this week is Huron, Ohio. It's a beautiful little city that uh, supports uh, everyone in many ways with great schools, etc., and and lots of things to do around here. You've got Cedar Point, and you've got uh, Kalahari Resort, the world's largest water park. You've got so many things around us to do. Golf courses, there's lots. That kind of says it. Getting back into championship coverage, We'll head to day two launch from Huron Boat Basin. Woo, it's gonna be cold today. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun. That right out's gonna be uh, gonna be good. Oh yeah. Anglers are facing different conditions this morning. The sky is clearing and the wind has changed directions. It's calm early, but it's expected to pick up later this afternoon. Uh, wind's coming out of the northeast this morning. Um, I think it's going to probably get tougher again. Yesterday was by far the best bite we've seen in uh, three weeks up here. And uh, I think today will probably get tough again. Matt Davis and his partner have a six pound lead to start the day. We'll see how they fare later. For now, we'll check in with the second place team of Taranju and Neubauer. They had a good start to their morning, getting into fish as soon as they got That's into better. position. With the wind churning up the water, boat control is tough, but they're making on, the most two. of it. Wow. Probably three pounds. Ah, oh, we got three in the box now. Uh, just, it's real tough to control out here. Um, if it gets rougher, it's gonna be real tough. These aren't the biggest of fish, but you know, to cash a check, it's gonna come down to ounces. Hailing from Escanaba and Iron Mountain, Michigan, Jamie Taranju and Ross Neubauer made their bones in the walleye world after winning the prestigious Cabela's National Team Championship in 2014. And now, with a second place finish on day one and another strong limit on day two, they'll head back to weigh in. Boat number four from Escanaba and Iron Mountain, Michigan, Jamie Taranjo and Ross Neubauer went out with 24 pounds, three ounces. Five fish limit in the box today. 16 pounds, 11 ounces for a total of 40, 14 moves you into third place. We were thinking like everybody else that the weights were gonna be 40 pounds after one day, but we're, uh, we're grinding it out and uh, hopefully uh, we're turning some heads, I guess. After a seventh place finish on day one, Randall Gaines and Mike Rhodes bettered their position on the second day adding 22 pounds, nine ounces to their total and putting them into third at the end of the day. The Canadian team of Greg Whitson and Mark Campo brought in 24 pounds on day one. They followed it up on day two with another 24 pounds, nine ounces, moving them into first place with one day of championship competition left. We uh, were blessed enough today to get uh, some good fish and a good bite. It was uh, very rough going out and uh, 
we were just uh, fortunate enough to get some fish. Not, not doing anything different than anybody else, we just got some good bites. Here's a look at your top 10 going into the final day. Stay with us. Coming up, we'll bring you coverage of the final day of competition at the Cabela's MWC Championship from Lake Erie and Huron, Ohio, right here on Federation Angler TV. Welcome back to Federation Angler TV and our coverage of the Cabela's Masters Walleye Circuit. Tournament coverage is brought to you in part by Berkeley, catch more fish, by low equipment attachments, Okuma High Performance Fishing Tackle, and by Mercury Marine, number one on the water. It's day three of the 2015 Cabela's MWC Championship. Yeah, we're gonna get a little bit wet, but uh... There's no color in that in that radar, so we're safe to get out there and go fishing. There's actually going to be some breaks in the weather here this morning and again this afternoon, so looks like some good walleye fishing weather to me. Day three, uh, we didn't get much sleep last night being in the lead, of course. You're thinking about a lot of uh, scenarios that could happen today, but we're just going to stick with our same program. It looks like it's going to rain today. The winds are supposed to be pretty strong around noon and some thunderstorms, so hopefully you can get a few passes in on our spot before uh, we get any kind of lightning in the air, which usually will scatter those walleyes and make the bite pretty tough. Out on the water with the tournament leaders, the winds have shifted and will blow to near 20 miles per hour, making boat control more difficult as storms roll in. Uh, so far we got two on the first pass in the box. They're uh, kind of small, but we'll take them right now, especially with this weather. Takes a little pressure off. We're doing the, uh, actually the same drill, the same uh, presentation, the same uh, depth, the same contour. We just keep uh, beating it over and over again. Fortunately, so far, they seem to reload in there every night. First, so first thing in the morning when you get in there, the bite's pretty good. It's a nice fish, Mark. Good. That's a nice fish. You break it. This just has a deformation. Whitson and Campo have three in the live well. While they reset, we'll check in with Randall Gaines and Mike Rhodes. They started the day in second place, and mid-morning, they're putting fish number two into the live well. Well, so far, so good. Um, we got two fish, nine o'clock-ish. Uh, of course, like to see them be about twice the size they are, but let's get five and then we'll work on them from there. I really expect to come out here and have a limit by now, at least to them little ones. You know, yesterday, it's funny we're going into them, but yesterday, uh, in order to keep our speed consistent, we had drift stocks out and we had the big engine and gear to keep the surge down, but also one of the things that was good for us yesterday is we fished the trough. Yeah. And, and it's hard to do, and, and it, uh, you gotta really pay attention, but uh, it, it equates to a, a steadier pull. Oh, <sighs> well, this one feels good. Just take your time. I got this one right behind the boat. I was reeling it in, right? It's okay. Okay. That's fish number three for Gaines and Rhodes. It was a slow start to the morning, but things are looking up. Well, that's one the size we need. Yes. As we do four more like that, we'll be happy today. Just let it, uh, let it fall where it may. <laughs> Back on the tournament leaders, Greg Whitson and Mark Campo are working on fish number four. With conditions beginning to deteriorate, boat control becomes more difficult. Got to be pretty small. Oh yeah. Purple perch again, eh? 
Yeah, that's been our main bait. That's clear. The last uh, two days, it's just we've loaded up every rod basically with purple perch. Husky jerk has been our main bait. We're running it back 40 to 45. Trying to keep our trolling speed about 1.5. Moving down the lake, we'll check in on Jamie Taranju and Ross Neubauer. They started the day in third, eight pounds behind the leaders. They've got five in the live well and could be culling with this catch. There's a quality net job. <laughs> yeah, that's what we've been getting out here. Um, it's good when the bite is tough to be catching fish, so uh, we're just gonna keep catching fish like this. One or two nice ones. There we go. Fish, we go. fish. Got him? Yeah. Nice. Anytime you can make it on national TV for a couple of days, uh, <laughs> doing something right. There he is. All right, another couple of pounds there. All day, that's all we get. Three pounders. We probably caught almost 60 to 70 fish over here in the last three to four days. We put a lot of time in here and we're hoping to have uh, 18 pounds, um, but we're gonna run, we've got about an hour and a half run back to uh, Huron where the weigh-in is going to be. And if we show up there with a little bit of time, there's there's a chance at maybe upgrading a couple fish there uh, right before we have to pull in. But if this wind is picking up now, if it gets real rough, we're gonna need all that hour and a half to just to get back to the weigh-in. So we're about ready to pick up here and go for a ride. Coming up, with $100,000 on the line, we'll head to the final weigh-in and crown the 2015 World Walleye Champions right here on Federation Angler TV. Welcome back to Federation Angler TV and our coverage of the Cabela's Masters Walleye Circuit. Tournament coverage is brought to you in part by G-Juice, by Abu Garcia for life, and by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Welcome back to Huron, Ohio. Competition is over for the 2015 Cabela's MWC Championship, and teams are making their way back into the Huron Boat Basin for the final weigh-in. In all, anglers caught 370 walleye weighing more than 1,400 pounds over the past three days. And all these fish were released right back into Lake Erie to ensure a good future for this fishery. Heading to the scales, the defending champions, Corey Springle and Derek Navis, had a rough week, catching just three fish for eight pounds, nine ounces. At the other end of the leaderboard, Randall Gaines and Mike Rhodes brought another limit to the scales. They need 15 pounds, nine ounces to take the lead. 15 pounds, nine ounces. With the basket of fish we caught today, we are actually ecstatic with where we uh, finished today. Of course, we'd always like to have that one extra big kicker fish, but uh, the, we're quite pleased. Coming up next, boat number four from Escanaba in Iron Mountain, Michigan, Jamie, Taranjo, and Ross Neubauer went out with 40 pounds, 14 ounces. They need 12 pounds to take the lead. They've got a five fish limit. Their five fish limit weighing in today at 19 pounds. We've got new leaders at 59 pounds, 14 ounces. I mean, we were kind of the wild card to even be here. We never even fished one of the, uh, well, we only fished one MWC event. Uh, so to come in and place in the top anything amongst these guys is awesome. Coming up next, our day two leaders from Windsor in St. Joachim, Ontario, Canada, Greg Whitson and Mark Campo. 48 pounds, nine ounces for the first two days. They need 11 pounds, five ounces, five fish limit. 17 pounds, three ounces, our new World Walleye Champions. 65 pounds, 12 ounces. Up against 48 of the best walleye teams on the continent, 
Greg Whitson and Mark Campo win by nearly six pounds and take home more than $21,000 and the title of 2015 World Walleye Champions. We come in today and we figured there was not a chance. We were down, uh, you know, we pulled 24 pounds, 24.08, and we had 17 today. And normally in a tournament, if you go down, you know, what is that, seven pounds or whatever, I mean, you don't stand a chance. But the conditions today were, I mean, because you can, the wind is horrible. The spot where we were getting all the fish, primarily, I think the big fish either moved out or was fished out because, you know, whatever, the fishing pressure. And uh, we made a great decision. We looked at each other and said, let's go to Gull Island Shoal. We got to try it. You know, it never lets us down to catch some fish here. And we went in there and let's lit them up. And it was just, we we looking at each other like, wow. <laughs> you know, there's no big fish, but at least, you know, this is going to keep us in it. We figured we'd have a top five maybe when we come in. Aerial footage this week was provided courtesy of Genius House Media, LLC. And a big thanks go out to the city of Huron, Ohio, and also to the good folks at Cabela's and Okuma Fishing. For information on upcoming events, please visit masterswalleyecircuit.com. This has been a presentation of Federation Angler TV. We'll see you next week.